I first got interested in pop songs, like all teenagers. And from pop songs, my interest grew, it expanded. Then I, I heard an opera, my first opera. I went to London to study and I heard Madame Butterfly. It was a huge lady uh, called Joan Hammond, who was in her late 50s singing a 16-year-old Chocho San. I mean, it really stretched your imagination. And the tenor wasn't as large as she was. And he had to lift her up into the Japanese uh, house, you know, it was a little house on stage. And I remember he tripped, climbing up the three stairs. He tripped and nearly fell with Joan Hammond in her arms. Uh, I thought it was so funny. I laughed out loud. And of course, all the audience turned around and said, <laughs> that was my first opera, full opera, uh, 1956. And since then, I've not stopped listening to opera, and later on started singing in opera myself, and then producing and directing operas. Well, I mean, it was started on a shoestring. Uh, we had the support of the uh, National University of Singapore Society, and we produced our first uh, four, or I produced my first four operas, uh, and uh, we did, we did uh, Carmen, we did uh, uh, La Traviata, The Land of Smiles, uh, and uh, then we decided to form uh, uh, Singapore Lyric Theatre. And uh, later on we say, why are we calling ourselves theatre when all we do is opera? So we changed the name to Singapore Lyric Opera. I still think about that uh, traumatic moment on stage in a production of uh, uh, Fledermouse. I played Eisenstein and I needed a watch on a long chain which I used to dangle to uh, Rosalinda. The tails I wore, there was a hole in the pocket. So when I put the watch into that pocket, it slipped in the hole and f fell to the bottom of that tail. Now, about 30 seconds before I needed to pull out the, uh, the chain, I just felt my jacket to see, now get it, get it ready, get it ready, Siakpa. Oh God, it's not there. Where is it? <laughs> I moved, smiled around, wondering, patted all my pocket, couldn't find it. So I went to the side stage uh, after a few seconds and told the guy there, can you go to the dressing room and get the, um, get the watch? Three seconds later, he ran back to the side of the stage and said, boy, <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> I saw a stage hand looking onto the stage with great interest, with his hand on his chin, and he had a Seiko watch, a big Seiko watch. I went up to him and said, Give me that watch. And he says, no. <laughs> Give me that watch. Reluctantly, he gave me the watch. And I took it out. It was a steel Seiko watch. And Rosalinda was supposed to drop that watch into her dress, into her bosom. That space. And so there was I singing the TikTok poker with Rosalinda. And gave her this huge steel Seiko. She looked at it. She was not amused. But it went down the <laughs> dress. <laughs> so we laugh about it when we get a chance to see each other, which is not often. When you are in a hall with a, a thousand uh, sized audience and you can see them smiling and laughing at the jokes or looking very uh, intense uh, in a dramatic moment, I think that, that gives me a, that gives me a, a kick. It keeps you going when I see smiles on the face of the audience when they move out. They have enjoyed themselves. So I've contributed to a moment in their life where they sat down in the hall, enjoyed the music, enjoyed the production.